Hello, welcome back to Dev Radio. I'm back with Lucky, who's going to talk to us more about AI, getting ready for the OpenAI Hackathon. And this video is going to be about the Azure OpenAI service, um, starting with how to set up the service in the portal, right? That's right, Matt. Great, awesome. Looking forward to this. OK, let me get started. Do you see my screen, Matt? Yes, I see the uh, the slides. The Wonderful. Slide. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, depending on where you are located. My name is Vishnu Pamula. My nickname is Lucky. We all need to have some luck these days. Uh, and I'm a cloud solution architect uh, focusing on the data and AI technologies, including uh, OpenAI. I'm also fascinated by the, the quantum computing technology. So. Azure has got the Azure quantum capability. So uh, uh, I'm an ambassador for that uh, uh, for the service. So I'm also a uh, you know, big believer in sharing my knowledge and empowering others. So I teach as an adjunct professor. I also have a course launched on the Udacity uh, website. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the Azure OpenAI SDKs. Before I show the SDK, I want to give you a brief overview of the OpenAI service and the capabilities we have in that Azure OpenAI family of services. By now, all of you are, are familiar with the, the OpenAI, the, the company, and the, the relationship that Microsoft has with the OpenAI. Since we have uh, uh, you know, where the Microsoft is the investor in OpenAI. So we, we we were able to bring these models into Azure pretty quickly. So right now we've got four different capabilities in Azure with, with OpenAI service. The text-based services powered by GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. And uh, chat GPT, which is the, the conversation-based service, which is built on top of the GPT uh, models, Codex model for code generation and code uh, understanding the documentation and so on, and Dolly 2 for the image generation, image captioning and, and so on. The way to interact with these models is just by giving the natural language as the input. As you see in this example, you just ask a question, give a natural language input. For example, write a tagline for, for an ice cream shop. These models give a, the response back. We call it as response or completion. So depending on which model you, you interact with, it gives the response. For example, the JPT4 model, the text-based model, gives the response back in, a, in the form of a text. A codex model. I'm asking the, the, in this example, we're asking it to generate a SQL query. So it gives the response in a SQL, in the form of a SQL query. And Dolly model gives the response in the form of an image. So with that background, I will switch to the Azure portal to show you how to create the Azure OpenAI service and get the, deploy the models and also how to get the the keys that we interact with using the SDKs. If you have not created the OpenAI service before, Azure portal is a place to create one. You can search for Azure OpenAI. And you can Click on the Create button and follow the instructions to create one. But for the purpose of demo, I'll show you the one that I already have created. So I'll bring up that service. And in the overview page, you will see the, the resource group. This service is on status of it, subscription, and so on. In order for you to interact with this service, 
you need an end, you need the endpoint for this service and also the key. You can find this endpoint here in the overview page or also in the keys and endpoints tab. So this is the endpoint name, the region, and also key. So you may want to copy this into a text pad, notepad that you'll be using as part of SDK. Before using the SDKs, you have to deploy the, the model that you want to work with. As you might know by this time, we've the Azure OpenAI service has got uh, multiple models, even within GPT itself. We have a DaVinci model, which is quite popular. We have other models as well, like Query, Babbage, and Ada. So we need to deploy the models before you can use them. You can deploy the models in the model deployment section, or you can also go to the Azure OpenAI Studio by using this link. So I have the OpenAI Studio right here. When you log in for the first time, you will not have anything in the deployment category uh, tab here. You would have to go to the model step section and select which model you want to deploy. As you can see here, you have DaVinci model, GPT 3.5 model, GPT-4, Ada, Babbage, Curie, and all these models. So you select the model that you want to deploy. And uh, if the model is already deployed, it will show the no, deployable as no. Otherwise, it will show yes. Select the model and deploy it. You just have to give the name to the model. That's all. If you go to the deployments tab, you will see the models that you deployed. So see here, I have various models deployed. So this is the deployment name is the one that you will be using in order to use the SDKs. So we need the endpoint name, the key, and the deployment name. So with that background, I will show you the SDK in the VS Code environment. So I, I cloned a GitHub repo that has the, the sample code for the SDK. The repo can be found in GitHub just by searching for Azure OpenAI samples. You can clone it into your environment, like I did it here. The first, in under the quick start folder, you have the first notebook as create resource notebook. This notebook shows you how to create the Azure OpenAI service, how to deploy the model, and so on. The same thing that I showed in the portal. You can also do it as uh, uh, as part of the, the command line, uh, you know, uh, uh, command line code. Once you create the OpenAI service, deploy the model, either using the SDKs, uh, command line uh, interface, or using the Azure portal and deploying the model. Either way is fine. But once we have the service, you can start interacting with it. This notebook, notebook gives you some sample uh, code showing you various ways to interact with these models. You also need to install the Python libraries for OpenAI and also .NET and .NET uh, library. So I've already installed, so I will not run this, this line. But here, the, the notebook is showing you various parameters that you need to pass to get the, the opening service. So here we're asked, we're, we're giving the, the open AI key. So in this example, we're, 
we're loading the, the OpenAI key from the environment variables. You can hard code the, the OpenAI key, but that's not the best practice. So the best practice is to set the environment variables. You can do that by these commands using set X, Azure OpenAI key, just give, give the key name that you got from the portal, like this key. and execute that in the terminal. You can use the, the Windows uh, command line, or you can do it in the, the terminal in VS Code. You can just run that set X command here. So you need to do that for both by opening a key and also the endpoint. Once that is done, this, this line will work. It will get the open a key and the open endpoint from the environment variables. So I just ran this code a few minutes ago. So it's, it's showing the endpoint that I created for OpenAI. So once we have the OpenAI endpoint captured and collected from the portal, now we need to select the model that you want to interact with. So here I am uh, using the model that I deployed for DaVinci 3. Now, the way to call this API is just by using the OpenAI package and the completions module. So you just need to use the create function, specify the engine that you want to run, and the prompt. I mean, the, which is the, the question that you want to ask this GPT model. So my, my prompt is this prompt. I just want to you know, ask the GPT, why should I learn chat GPT? Just need to pass that. And there are more parameters that you can pass. In this example, we're showing uh, only one parameter, which is max number of tokens, 60. I will explain more parameters after this. So I ran the, this code and it gave me the explanation, I mean, the, the response or the completion explaining why should I learn ChatGPT. This gives various parameters as well. As part of the response variable, you have the, the choices here which include the response and also various parameters that you, you can interact with. So in this, uh, you know, rather than getting the entire response, you can also get the exactly the completion from it by using the, the index right here. You can also, the, the above example is just asking a question, which we got the response back. You can also ask more advanced questions like summarizing the text for us. Imagine you, you have large volumes of documents and you want to pass that to the GPT model and you want to, it to summarize the text for you. You can write, you can write like, you can give you text and, and at the end of it, you can write, summarize this for me. Or you can also type in just TLDR. That is, that means, summarize this for me. So that's a way of another way of saving some number of tokens that you want to pass to the model. Too long, don't read. Too long, don't read. Yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so with that prompt, I'm calling the, the GPT model, same model, the VP GPT model, DaVinci. I'm passing more parameters now. Let me explain what these parameters are, some of the important parameters. The temperature parameter tells the model how the model, how creative the model you want to be. The, you can, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, play with these parameters to get the right output. 
temperature and total probability are the ones that you uh, the, that are mostly uh, you know mostly uh, uh, adjusted in order for you to get the right output so with this example I want the GPT model to summarize it. So I pass these parameters and it gave me the summary here. Again, you can specify how many words that you want to have in the summary, how many lines you want, how many paragraphs. You can do all that in the in the summarize uh, in the uh, in the uh, as part of the prompt. So GPT model will follow your instruction and give you the, the response based on that. You can also follow this notebook to perform more tasks like classifying the text for you. So in this example, we're classifying uh, what could, what is a, uh, what is a, uh, what are the categories I have in this text, like pricing and hardware support, again, depending on the, what customer is asking for. And, and based on that, it classifies. So see here, based on my the input that I gave, it's able to uh, classify this as, as a hardware support request. So you can classify the document, you can generate the uh, product names. And there is also some advanced uh, concept called word embeddings. So this is the technique that is used to, you know, perform the search more efficient way from the large volumes of documents. And also you can follow the, once you get the, the comfort of with this quick start tutorials, you can follow uh, the, the advanced notebooks like uh, you know, code generation notebooks, and, you know, best practices, even prompt engineering. I mentioned to you about giving some, uh, you know, prompt techniques to get the right output, like, like uh, you know, summarizing the uh, the text for you, or maybe giving some instructions on what to respond back, what not to respond back. If the chat GPT is, if I ask a, a very uh, irrelevant relevant question, I don't want the chat GPT to respond back. So we can give those the those instructions to the chat GPT so that it can uh, only respond based on you know, what is relevant. So, so you can follow this notebook for like the chain of thought example where you, you have, uh, let's say you know, various, uh, the huge document broken into multiple multiple uh, you know paragraphs. How do you maintain the, the context? How do you maintain the, uh, you know, the, you know, the chain of thought capability where uh, combining multiple prompts and getting the right output and so on. So this is what I wanted to show you about interacting with the open AI service using the SDKs. Again, you can go to this GitHub repo and uh, you can clone it, clone it into your environment and you can start playing with the SDKs. Thank you. That was great. From uh, zero to getting into prompts in uh, under 20 minutes. Thanks so much. Thank you, Matt. Take care, everyone.